Hello everybody, Ellie here for Who Culture. Oh my goodness gracious. How amazing was that trailer? When I tell you I've been sat here waiting all day for the trailer, not just for work purposes, but just I really wanted to see the trailer. I mean, I literally cannot pick a single thing out of this trailer that I was not happy about. And I showed it to my family who are um, yeah, take it or leave it. They all watched the trailer and all went, that looks amazing. So high praise from the start. Let's break it down, shall we? So immediately we start with the TARDIS flying towards unit towers. There's sparks coming off the ground. It's very cinematic, it's very epic. I loved it, it was really, really, really amazing. I feel like it really sets the tone for how this season is gonna be. They've really upped the ante, it's very epic, very, yeah, just very dramatic. The one thing I will say though, and you know, this is a me problem, we're all just gonna ha have to get used to it, but it, it's still, feels weird to see the Disney logo on Doctor Who. The, you know, the Disney Plus logo appears on the screen at this point and it still just feels like, this is new. I can see Rose off to the side there. I can also see Lenny Rush's character, Morris, to the side there as well. Also, on the opposite side of the TARDIS, we have Colonel Sexy back again. Sean will be very happy. I mean, I'm quite happy about it too. Um, and he is saluting the TARDIS, and I love that. And then we have the 15th Doctor stepping out of the TARDIS, and what does he say? Give me the lovin'. It instantly just sets the tone, doesn't it, for this Doctor, and it does make you wonder, who is he talking to? Probably Kate. Um, we didn't see Shirley in that shot previously, um, so whether it's Shirley, maybe it's both of them. I doubt it's Rose, just because of the positioning of where she is in that shot beforehand, it would be weird, she'd like have to leg it round to then greet him. But who knows who it might be, maybe it's Donna. Probably not Donna, but it could be Donna. So then we've got that kind of Disney branding again. I will say I do really like the Disney branding that we're seeing so far. I love the colours of that. I kind of wish that we had those colours and that kind of style of the Vortex in, in the opening titles itself. But as it stands, that's just, just for this promotional content. One thing that we did notice though is it says new series. Now I have been really consciously calling it season one ever since we were told that that was the new, the rebrand that we were having, it was starting at season one. So unless this is like an American way of them saying new series is in here is a brand new television series, as opposed to here is a new series of an existing television show, I don't know. Why have I been so careful about calling it season one if you're gonna still call it series? Do not confuse me like that. We already have this debate on a daily basis in the comment sections. Is it series 14? Is it season one? Don't confuse us, please, Disney. So then we have a shot of the TARDIS on a cliff from quite a distance. Now, I'm fairly certain this was in the previous trailer that we saw at the end of the Christmas special. Um, and as we do see throughout this trailer, there is a lot of use of old footage. Lots of flashbacks to, you know, when Ruby and the Doctor first met. Now, it's not uncommon for trailers to reuse footage, to use old footage, but it does seem like time and flashbacks might be a kind of key component to the story of this this season. I do think there's more significance to the shots that are being used and the overall meaning of this rather than just we don't have enough footage for the trailer, let's reuse some old shots. So then we have another shot of the TARDIS flying towards unit towers again. This time it's from a different direction to the initial shots that we had, the first shots that we saw in the trailer. I was under the impression that unit was only going to be visible, only going to be present in the final episode. Perhaps actually we're gonna see unit appearing in more than one episode, or they've just sneakily flipped the shot, or it's another shot from the same episode, um, uh, just from a different angle. And then we have the, the first glimpse again of Carla and Cherry Sunday. Gotta love Cherry Sunday and Carla, to be fair. Now, in this shot, Carla is wearing the same outfit that we saw her wearing in the end of the church on Ruby Road. Their Christmas decorations are still up. So that suggests to me that this scene is either the beginning of episode one, and it completely continues from, um, from where we left off, or it just suggests to me that no matter how many adventures they go on, at some point they are going to return back to Ruby's house um, and no time will have passed. In series one, in 2005, when Rose was did return for the first time, when the Doctor brought Rose back for the first time, he made a mistake and they returned a year later. This actually suggests that Ruby will be returned and it will be like they were never gone. Having said that, 
We also do see the TARDIS crashing through their kitchen ceiling, and I feel like there's going to be a running joke, a running theme, that the Doctor keeps destroying Carla's ceiling, because we saw that happen, obviously, in the church on Ruby Road. We've seen a shot of him crashing through the ceiling here, so I feel like it's going to become like a running joke that the Doctor just keeps destroying the house. So then we have, again, a lot of reuse of shots and clips from... Um, from the church on Ruby Road when Ruby enters the TARDIS for the first time at the end of that episode. The colour gradient looks slightly different to that episode, maybe a little bit murkier. Again, we're kind of reading into this that there's going to be some sort of something wrong with time. Maybe this is an indication that all is not as it seems and the past is being altered in some way, or they've just decided, you know what, let's edit it slightly and make it look a little bit more... Um, intriguing. Then we have a shot of the Doctor in that wonderful costume that we have seen previously, we've seen shots of it already, that will be in the Beatles episode. And I love the whole vibe going in this whole episode. The 60s vibe, we all know that vintage vibes are my jam anyway, but I love that the Doctor has multiple costumes as well. Usually the companion will change costume between adventures, but the Doctor always wears the same thing. And I like that this Doctor is embracing that change and, and is wearing different outfits for different adventures and fitting in with the crowd. I really, really like that. And I, yeah, I just love, I love the whole 60s vibe that's going on for this episode. In regards to the shot itself, it definitely feels like the Doctor and Ruby have been brought somewhere almost against their will, somewhere where they've been forced to watch something, a little bit like when um, 14 and Donna were forced by the toy maker to kind of watch the puppet show. It just seems like they have either discovered something that is not good or they've been brought somewhere against their will. Then we have a brief glimpse of the Doctor in some sort of kind of beige robes in what looks like some sort of tent. Anyone else getting Dune 2 vibes or even Star Wars vibes? I feel like any sci-fi show that has some sort of sandy planet, those sort of beige cloaks, Instantly I think of Star Wars. It happens all the time. We've had Star Trek promotional images for the upcoming season five um, for Discovery. And again, soon as I see a sandy planet and beige clothes, I just think of Star Wars. Did you hear my shoulder click then? <laughs> then we have a shot of the Doctor wearing his kind of Regency outfit with a holographic David Tennant head floating next to him. Now this feels like it could either be one of those kind of grand doctor bragging like do you know who I am moments or the villain basically having captured the doctor and instead going I know exactly who you are see and like basically pulling up the doctor's CV. Um, and this has happened a lot in Doctor Who. We've had many, many instances where the Doctor has kind of gone, look me up. I mean, instantly my mind is going to the 11th hour when the 11th Doctor did the very same thing to the Atraxi. So it's not uncommon, but we also could be completely wrong and it could be something completely different. We're obviously seeing what looks like the 10th Doctor as opposed to 14 here. Um, we don't know if we're going to see all of the Doctors in this scene or just that Doctor. That would actually explain a lot of things. If it's going to be lots of Doctors, then it kind of suggests that it's more about the Doctor themselves. If it's just David Tennant, then could we maybe assume that maybe it is 14 and it's more to do with where is this person? Who knows? All we know is that David Tennant just can't keep away from Doctor Who at this point. Then we have some more Church on Ruby Road shot reuse, and we get our first glimpse of Mrs. Flood, um, which I believe is again another repeated shot. I could be wrong, but she's wearing the same outfit as in the Church on Ruby Road. And I feel like, have we seen that shot before? I'm not sure. But it is surprising that this is the only, only kind of shot we get of her. I thought that we'd be teased a lot more with Mrs. Flood. Obviously, that's the big mystery that everyone is hanging on at the moment. So. Perhaps maybe a lot of her scenes contain spoilers. That is one thing I will say about this trailer. It's very, very, very good at enticing and exciting, but not giving too much away. And that's how a trailer should be. You don't want it to spoil anything. You don't want to watch a trailer and feel like you basically don't need to watch the episode or the series anymore because it tells you everything. This has been this has been done perfectly. Then we've got some wonderful shots of Ruby and the Doctor in the TARDIS, kind of floating around a little bit. I'm loving the, the different colours that we're getting of the TARDIS here. I mean, the purple, yes. Purple's my favourite colour, if you didn't know. Um, so I'm very much here for the purple vibes. But we've already seen so far the TARDIS has been blue, it's been orange, it's been purple, it's been white. I really love the design that they've gone for here with all those LED lights and the way it can change colour. It, it feels... I don't know, it just feels really Doctor Who. Also just the idea that the colours can, you know, connotate 
emotions and situations, you know, suddenly they're in danger, all the lights can go red. Do you know, it, I just feel like the use of the different colored lights can really benefit the narrative of, of the episodes as well. Then we have a shot of the time vortex. Um, there's a lot of sparks in this section of it, um, in the title, title sequence, I guess. Um, I'm not sure if this is a shot of the title sequence or whether the time vortex is actually going to be visible quite a lot within, within the series itself. We were trying to debate whether the kind of sparks within the time vortex are more noticeable in this shot than they were in the title sequence for the church on Ruby Road. We have been teased that the sparks are relevant and important, um, and the fact that the vortex appears quite often in the trailer does suggest that something very relevant is going to happen here. It's very, it's more important than just being the title sequence, um, to my mind. I'm intrigued to find out whether perhaps the time vortex will like deteriorate more and more with each opening title sequence across each episode. That would be really cool if it just slowly deteriorated with each episode as whatever is destroying it gets worse. Okay, next we have dinosaurs. And, okay, <laughs> fun fact, my favourite dinosaur is the Diplodocus. And what dinosaur is right there at the forefront? Diplodocus. I mean, it's like they made the scene just for me. It also is very strange to me. Like, to me, I feel like dinosaurs is one of the obvious things that you would do in Doctor Who. Um, but within modern Who, we haven't really had that much of them. Obviously, we had the T-Rex in um, Deep Breath, but that was all the way back in 2014. We did have the episode Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, but I mean, I feel like seeing the dinosaurs in their natural habitat is something that I'm surprised we haven't done before. I guess there's, you know, now it's more achievable without looking too dodgy, but perhaps back in, you know, 2005, the debate between practical dinosaurs, meh, or then doing them CGI, could that not work so well? But I'm really glad we have got the dinosaurs here. I, I feel like we probably won't see much of them. I don't, I feel like this is going to be one of those scenes where we might see glimpses of a few places the Doctor takes Ruby as like a, just a starting point. Also, this shot very much reminded myself and Danny both of the moment in the, um, the Pandorica opens when Amy and the Doctor kind of step out the TARDIS and they see that cliff face that River has graffitied. It just had very similar vibes. And then of course we had that hilarious scene where Ruby is concerned that if she steps on a butterfly she'll change the future. We all know about the kind of the butterfly effect and the Doctor dismissing that like that's not going to happen and of course she does it and she changes into some weird reptilian butterfly looking thing. I think that scene was brilliant. It was really funny. I love the comedy that we're getting. I don't think that that look on Ruby is going to stick around for too long but I do think that there is relevance to the fact that something that the Doctor usually would um, dismiss as a myth suddenly has become um, a reality and I think that's going to be a theme throughout this season. I'm going to get to that in more detail in a little while when we get to some more some of the other shots um, and sequences but I definitely think as well as the Mavity gag as well which has stuck I think that there's definitely something more to the idea of myths and fables suddenly becoming reality. And we have had hints of this already with the idea of the goblins as well um, and links to the toy maker. But as I said, I'll get back to that in a second. Then we get our first glimpse of the TV remote. No, I'm joking. I mean the sonic screwdriver. I'm sorry, I just still can't get on board with the silly design of the sonic screwdriver. But what I will say is it's very nice to not see the doctor waving it around. He's kind of just holding it, which is very nice to see. Um, and let's point out yet again another costume change for these characters. There's there's already been so many different costumes. It's very ambitious for Doctor Who, and it, it is really showing the money that's gone into it. It's you know it's Doctor Who unlike anything we've seen before. Next we see Indira Varma. Now we knew already that she had been cast to play a role called the Duchess. When she was announced, Russell T Davis warned us to beware. Um, and that obviously suggested to us that she was going to be playing a villain and she definitely looks very villainous here So I think it's confirmed that Indira Varma is is very much playing a villain and she looks like some sort of bird villain Then we have a wonderful scene of the the Regency dancing the doctor finally learned to dance properly I mean Rose would just be so proud and then we've kind of got this whole Bridgerton vibe We've even got a little Bridgerton joke in there um, I believe this is episode 6 of the season, which means that it will be airing on the 8th of June. I'm very excited about this. Um, I just, I mentioned um, at the beginning that I showed my family the trailer. My brother instantly said, I feel like we haven't seen, like, the past in Doctor Who in so long. And I see what he means. Like, this kind of proper Regency, like, um, the girl in the fireplace kind of era, 
It probably has been, it definitely has been in Doctor Who since then, but it just, this really feels like, oh yes, we're going into the past again. Also just a fun little fact because we've got the mention of Bridgerton here. Bridgerton season three will be dropping just around, this, just before um, this episode. And um, Nicola Coughlin will obviously be playing the kind of main focus of that third season. And she will also be appearing in Doctor Who later on at some point. So that's a fun little nod to her and to Bridgerton in general. Then we have a poor old lady who looks very, very, very scared and like she may very soon be very dead. Um, what's on her jumper there? Is it roses? No, I'm only kidding. It, she's not Rose, we're not hinting Rose, but you know, <laughs> we have to point these things out. And this is where we get our first proper look at Jinx Monsoon in action. I really love the design of this character and I really, really love the idea of music coming alive and being used as a weapon and that physical, um, that visual of the, the musical notes and the score being used as a weapon, I, it looked amazing. That's so clever. Actually, it reminds me of that scene in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness where they do use the musical notes as a weapon. A lot of people didn't like that scene. I really enjoyed that scene. And obviously a little bit later we do see that poor Ruby gets herself in quite the tangle uh, within those musical notes. And that is probably one of the best shots of Ruby in the entire um, in the entire trailer. That looked amazing. But at the same time, we do then have a shot now of Ruby holding a massive gun. Um, <laughs> so again, she looks pretty cool there too. Reminded me of when Rose Tyler had that massive gun and she goes, do you like my gun? Similar vibes. This is very much from the Landmine episode. Now, if you saw our video the other day talking about Stephen Moffat's return, um, we said that we were very much under the impression that this Landmine focused episode will be the episode written by Stephen Moffat. Judging by this, the clip here, the, the shot here, um, it looks very much to me like the Doctor is the one stuck on the landmine and Ruby is the one who's going to be having to follow his his directions and instructions to save the day, basically. And she seems more than capable, judging by how she's standing there with that gun right now. Then we see Ruby um, looking quite happy um, and she's got some screens behind her. Pretty sure it's not, but is that the time vortex on the screens behind her? Maybe. Probably not, but as we've said, the, the time vortex and the kind of deterioration of it um, is something that will be important to this season. Next, we got this really creepy shot of what looks like someone emerging from within within a drum. My initial thoughts went to the gang of flesh and also the adipose. I think it's just the colour and the kind of body horror part of it. Um, but it is really, really terrifying. It's like someone being birthed from a drum. And it made me then think, well, if Jinx Monsoon is like a musical villain, Perhaps these creatures are born of music, so this literally is some sort of creature born of an instrument. I don't know, maybe I'm thinking too much into it, but it's really interesting. Okay, and next we have a street lamp, and the voiceover is Kate Stewart saying, Things seem to be turning more and more supernatural. This is my theory for this season, or for the show moving forward for quite some time. We definitely seem to have this theme, this acknowledgement that the supernatural the fantastical, the fictional, is suddenly becoming real. And I mentioned this earlier when I was talking about um, the myths that suddenly now actually exist, as opposed to being a myth or a fable, they suddenly become reality. You know, the show beforehand has very much been the Doctor saying monsters, ghosts, vampires, they don't exist. They're not real. Usually they're an alien but there is usually an explanation that dismisses them being, that, that, that dismisses them existing. Ghosts aren't real. Um, which actually reminds me, this particular shot of that blue lamp reminds me of the Gelf. Now the Gelf was the first kind of example we had in modern Who of the Doctor dismissing something supernatural um, as existing. You know, the Gelf, they weren't really ghosts. And that was the first example we had where the Doctor kind of definitively said, ghosts aren't real, these are aliens. And it's kind of gone full circle now because it feels like all these things that the Doctor has always insisted aren't real, can't be real, aren't possible, suddenly are. And I think this is what's going to be the thread of this season. Now I could be completely wrong, but it really feels like to me that this is the change that everybody seems to be noticing. Things that shouldn't exist 
suddenly are existing. You know, and this links also to the idea, you know, the toy maker said that um, his legions were coming, and I feel like ever since the Doctor invoked myth at the edge of the universe, it's been hinted that that has done something. Something has changed. That's what allowed the toy maker to come through. And I feel like this is the key to the changes we're seeing in this new season, that we are shifting into the fantastical and the supernatural. And the Doctor is just as confused by these things suddenly being possible um, as we are as an audience who always were under the impression that the Doctor was, these things do not exist, these things aren't real. It's like the whole dynamic of the fundamentals of the show are shifting and I feel like that is what is being observed in universe as well as outside as viewers. So next we have a shot of a wine glass smashing. There's music gear in the background um, so assuming it's from the Beatles episode. There's also a book, a book in to the right and the spine says EMI um, which is a record label or a music group that had the Beatles in its roster at the time. Also, the idea of glass shattering is very much linked to music, isn't it? You know, the use of different pitches and frequencies um, and opera singers smashing glasses with the, the tones. Um, so it definitely feels like it's part of that musical episode. It could very much be, you know, a cold open, you know, someone gets killed, a glass smashes, it's very visual. It could work very well as a cold open to that episode. Now we have a figure in a hood pointing. Now we know that from the church on Ruby Road that Ruby's mother was wearing a hood um, as she walked away. It looks like it could be that snowy Christmas lights background. To me, it just, it makes me think of the trickster and that could actually work. The whole idea of the trickster is to, to change to change time, to alter things, to create parallel worlds, to to meddle. And so I feel like the trickster actually could be a really um, interesting avenue to go down. And I, I always feel like the trickster deserved to be in Doctor Who. That was such a brilliant villain in the Sarah Jane Adventures, and I feel like there was so much potential for that character that we never saw realised on Doctor Who itself. Also, the idea that Ruby's mother could actually turn out to be some kind of villain is very intriguing. Almost as if Ruby is some long-term trap that's been set for the Doctor, um, and it's all part of a, a grander scheme. Oh, there's so many theories. Okay, so next we have the shot with the, the Demogorgon um, that we have seen previously um, in other trailers, but it's an extended version. And obviously Ruby saying is a monster and the Doctor saying, don't be ridiculous. Um, there's no such thing as monsters. They're just creatures you haven't met yet. I really like that line, but it is immediately followed by the Doctor screaming and running away. And I feel like this again lends itself to that theory that things the Doctor fundamentally believes not to exist are suddenly real. Okay, then we have this really great shot of like, like smoke and dust funneling through um, a street. Hello, Disney dollars. Also, let's not rule out the fact that there could be characters or creatures CGI'd out of shots like this. So although we know they're not in this season and we've been told that, wouldn't be the least bit surprised if we actually had Daleks fly flying in the sky also in this scene. Some more glimpses of Unit. We're gonna see a little bit more of Unit HQ than just that one room that we've seen already. We have Lenny Rush as Morris um, and it seems that Morris is a member of UNIT, or at least that's what it appears. My theory is either Morris works for UNIT or Morris is some sort of liaison and could very well be a villain in disguise as a good guy. I'm not sure, but I am intrigued to find out more about the character. And again, in that same shot, we've got Yasmin Finney returning as Rose, which we knew obviously we've got Kate Stewart there as well. I think Mel is behind the Doctor. It's quite hard to work out, but I'm fairly certain that Mel is there as well. So just, you know, confirming that we are going to see more of Unit. And it seems like Unit is going to be quite vital to that episode. Then I'm not entirely sure what it is, but something in water. These visuals are amazing. They are stunning. I have never felt more enthralled by what I'm seeing visually in a trailer for Doctor Who. Um, also that kind of thing in the water very much gives like Inception, kind of Christopher Nolan vibes. Totally here for it. Next we have this dystopian looking London. Judging by the costumes they're wearing, it's in the Beatles episode. It feels like basically if you destroy the Beatles, you destroy the world. Um, are we wrong? 
The Beatles are pretty amazing. What is very, very great though, is this idea of the Doctor showing Ruby kind of the destruction of the Earth. And this is something that's quite common um, between the Doctor and their companion. Obviously, we had Nine and Rose doing it in The End of the World, Eleven and Clara in Hyde when um, he goes to the end of the universe. These moments are really huge for the companions in particular. But it's also really nice to see that Shuti Gatwa as the Doctor is also getting quite emotional in this scene. And it very much confirms that this Doctor is going to be much more sensitive much more emotional. Um, I really, really do like that. Um, but not it, not too emotional as in, I know we've spoken extensively about how this Doctor is free of kind of past burdens. Just because they're free of their past burdens doesn't mean that they're not still sensitive and emotional to things that are happening around them. It just means that they've dealt with the trauma of their past. Then we have this really cool shot of basically the landmine exploding, but in reverse. And that's how it is in the trailer. So it definitely feels like there is a Moffat twist going on in this episode. Not sure if it's something to do with time or maybe being stuck in a loop. Oh, what if the landmine keeps going off and they keep having to like a Groundhog Day and the, the, the landmine keeps exploding. And they have to keep resetting and trying to not let it explode. Ooh. I like it. Then we have the scene between Carla and the Doctor where she basically says, can you promise me that she'll be safe? And that's a very Russell T Davis thing to have. You know, the mother of the companion basically making the Doctor swear that he will protect their daughter. You know, we had this again with, with Nine and Jackie. Um, it feels very Russell T Davis. It definitely gave me series one vibes. Also, Shooty's wearing another outfit. How many outfits does the Doctor have? But I'm totally here for it. As I said, I really, really, really do like that the Doctor is changing outfits. Then we've got these various shots of Ruby in different situations. And the question is, are these flashbacks? Are these alternate realities? Different versions of the same person? Major theory, okay? So in one of those shots, you've got that creepy woman kind of lingering in the background behind Ruby. What if Ruby is being stalked by her own version of the Watcher? You know how like the fourth Doctor was stalked by, by the Watcher? What if Ruby's Watcher is Mrs. Flood? or Mrs. Meridue. You know, what if it's all connected in some way? What if they're all one person? Oh, I'm just... There are so many theories! Then we have another really random shot of the Doctor falling through the, the goblin ship from the church on Ruby Road. Again, weird that we have this random reuse shot, but what if it's not a reuse shot? What if this idea of them going back in time or getting stuck in loops or repeating the same moments in, dif in slightly different ways? What if it isn't actually a reuse shot. You know, this idea of like going back on your own timeline like the 11th Doctor did in The Big Bang. It just seems very strange that we've seen a lot of repeated shots from episodes that have already aired. Then we've got the shot of Mel and the Doctor on the bike going through London. We've already seen this shot. We already have, uh, we knew that Mel was gonna be um, in this scene, in this episode, on the bike. Um, there is, um, if you do pause it at the right moment, it does look like Billy Piper. It's definitely not. It's definitely Bonnie Langford or her stunt double, but it's definitely not Billy Piper. Just looks a little bit like her. Then we've got the TARDIS being scanned and we've got triad technology announcement, all stations code red. Has the TARDIS gone rogue? Why are they scanning the TARDIS? But has anyone noticed, right, on one of those screens it says S triad. Do you know what S triad works together to be? TARDIS. What if Triad Technologies is all linked to the TARDIS in some way? Also, we have Susan Triad slash Susan Twist slash Mrs. Meridu. Meridu? Meridu. What if they're all connected? The TARDIS is linked somehow. And the more I'm thinking about the idea of maybe time being broken or whatever, it's all linked to the TARDIS in some way. Then we have a shot of the Doctor looking at Ruby and then instantly we cut to the Doctor stood alone and Ruby is gone. If that is not indication that something revolving around time and Ruby is happening here, I do not know what does. There is something happening with Ruby and timelines and this shot pretty much clarifies that. Definitely feels like a metaphor of some sort and it's a really powerful shot as well. The way this trailer has been edited, it's just beautiful. Then bring on the musical number. There is definitely a musical number coming. I am so ready for it, so excited for it, getting major like singing in the rain vibes happening here. I know a lot of people nah, don't want a musical number, but it looks really fun and exciting, so bring it on. Okay, then we have the Doctor saying everything is possible. Everything is possible. Now the delivery of that line is key. This isn't just going, oh, anything's possible, everything's possible. This to me very much supports my theory that suddenly the Doctor has come to the realization that everything is possible. 
That is not the norm. Suddenly, anything, everything is possible. The fundamentals of the universe have changed and everything is possible. Mark my words, something is happening here. Then we have the shot that I think has been blowing up on Twitter the most, um, is the TARDIS on the cliff, kind of looking a little bit like some sort of grave site. Initially, it gives off major Clara mural vibes. Um, a lot of people have drawn those comparisons, but also it feels like a callback to 14 speech in Wild Blue Yonder, and when he is imagining where the TARDIS disappears to. And one of the lines is, maybe it lands on some outcrop near the sea, and there's a tribe and they worship it for a hundred years. That is the TARDIS on an outcrop near the sea. Not quite sure what the link is, but I feel like there's one there. And if you pair that with the shot that we also saw of Ruby kind of sat on her own on presumably the same cliff, it very much feels like some sort of memorial or grave. You know, those flowers, flowers, those flowers aren't growing there. They're placed there like it's a grave. And it's almost like she's sitting and like holding vigil or something. Where's the doctor? I'm concerned. Then we see Ruby in this room that's kind of black and there's loads of lights shining on her. Very much reminds me of Turn Left, you know, when Donna has to stand in that machine that allows her to travel back in her own timeline. Ruby is at the center of this whole season. Something is happening and Ruby is the key. There's something wrong with time. There's loads of flashbacks in this trailer. There's lots of focus on the time vortex. We've had mention of the butterfly effect. Russell T Davis did say that we would revisit the church that we saw in the church on Ruby Road. And I feel like somehow she's gonna have to travel back on her own past. And then finally, the very last shot of the trailer, we have the doctor breaking the fourth wall and winking into the camera, just as Mrs. Flood did at the end of the church on Ruby Road. And it's just another element of barriers being broken. Things that shouldn't be possible becoming possible. The doctor shouldn't be able to see right through the screen into your soul. That's the first rule of, of television and filmmaking. They don't break the fourth wall. You're separate from that reality, but it feels very much like realities are being broken here. Barriers are being broken. The impossible is becoming reality. And I'm so here for it. I'm so excited. I love breaking things down like this. And all of these theories could be completely wrong. Of course I know that. But I just feel like I'm onto something here. As I mentioned at the beginning, there's not a single part of that trailer that I didn't enjoy. I absolutely loved it from start to finish. It's made me so excited for the upcoming season. So excited. And as I said as well, it very much is a perfect trailer. It doesn't give anything spoilery away, but it teases just enough to excite you for what's to come. It was perfectly made. I know we have had some concerns about certain elements of the Disney involvement and things like that, but. The show itself looks like it's benefiting massively from this Disney deal in terms of funding, in terms of marketing. I'm very, very excited. I cannot wait. Now, I want to know what you think about this trailer in the comments down below. Let me know if you think my theory is, is the one. Let me know your own theories. And we may or may not discuss this further, so keep your eyes peeled for probably a discussion between myself and Sean in the upcoming week, um, diving deeper into the elements of this trailer. In the meantime, I've been Ellie for Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.